was just thinking about Adam. Ooh, there's a happy subject. Did he ever tell you why he went to so much trouble to help out Allie? To protect me, he said. To protect you? From what exactly? Well, you know, from Allie going nuts with an axe at me or, or something like that. I mean, she did get a little weird about my pregnancy. Yes, it's true. Actually, you know, I'm glad he got rid of her. She was getting a little scary, switching the blood samples at the lab to fake her pregnancy. I still get shivers thinking about her creeping around the lab late at night. I mean, who knows what else she might have done. The hell Mateo went through for me. Haley, I'm he, just kidding. He saved my life on so many occasions, you know. First time was right here on this beach. When I came to this town, I was a freeze-dried alcoholic. Freeze-dried? Yeah. Just add booze and stir. I was a mess. I was a punk kid, smart mouth waste. Well, you still got your smart mouth. You know, back then it wasn't cute. Oh, well, I find that very hard to believe. It's annoying, freaky, freak. Black-haired, fashion disaster. Get out of here. I have pictures. <laughs> I was the kind of girl that you would not bring home to your parents unless you wanted to get cut out of the will, you know? <laughs> and then after I graduated from champagne to vodka, I found myself marrying one loser after another, and then... Mateo came and uh, picked up all the pieces. Put me back together. And then I woke up. So the perfect love didn't happen all along? Oh, hardly. It's like one step forward, two steps back. And then I realized that without Mateo, I couldn't breathe. Your own personal oxygen supply. Yeah. Hmm. And so I vowed that I'd be his everything to him. That I'd have his children. And then I'd have a family. I'd have a family like the one I never had. <laughs> if you knew Arlene, you'd know how whack that thought really is. Arlene's your mom? <laughs> Loosely speaking. You know, after Mateo, none of that really mattered because he was such a good man, such a selfless, uh, wonderful man. And he made me forget all the badness in my life, all the horrible stuff that happened. And he gave me hope. He showed me love, and I opened my heart up so wide I thought that it would burst. And now? Now I realize that... Uh, I have to see if I can try to uh, open my heart wider to make room for his son by some woman I never knew existed. And what if you can't open your heart any wider? Then I guess all the dreams I had belong to somebody else. Listen, did you mean what you said about you and Adam getting along? Yeah. Yeah, I could handle it. You know every trick in his repertoire. Including the olive branch dipped in strychnine? Hmm. I have poison control's number at the front of my Rolodex. You better. <laughs> oh, speaking of which. <clears throat> yes, can you get me those numbers on my desk right away, please? Rudy, I told you the meeting is in 30. Colby. No, no, no. The Washington fiasco shouldn't cause a preempt. Come on, people. The, the politicos can pay for their own airtime. Cool. For, yo, that's it. No more. Hello, honey. How's my baby? Would you like me being all mean with those stiffs in the news? <laughs> Mommy chews nails for breakfast, doesn't she? Yeah, she can tame wild horses, too. Bet she can. But can she be a killer TV exec 
And a single mom. Well, the mom job is way harder. I assumed you'd have a state-of-the-art daycare center in this building by now. Well, I would. Except mommy can't stand to be away from her precious for more than three minutes. Well, obviously you have the mom job knocked. Well, I don't know. I think little Colby could use a father. Well, isn't Jake coming by occasionally? That is part of the arrangement. Really? Yeah, I don't want him in the equation. The only person I can see is a part of the equation. The only man that I know would be a perfect father is the man who's standing in front of me right now. What's with that goofy grin? Should I be scared of you? Is this your first visit to the Pine Valley Fertility Clinic, Dr. Hayward? Yes, it is. Um, but I've heard it said that your operations are very well organized and your protocol excellent. Oh. I'm sorry, will you excuse me just for a minute? Of course. Take your time. <clears throat> well, what were you going to tell us about Liza's baby? Nothing. I wasn't going to say anything at all. But then why did you... Why did you bring... I was doing the usual, Jake. Making trouble where there is none. The answer is here, Allie, isn't it? Now, what specifically can I help you with, Dr. Hayward? Artificial insemination. I'm sorry, Dr. Hayward. We put a moratorium on taking donations until we know if this clinic will survive. Well, the clinic is in jeopardy? The new owner is selling, after only owning it for a few months. Businessmen. Hmm. Well, that seems rather short-sighted. Who's the owner? Oh, I'm, I'm not free to disclose that information. Oh, I see. Well, how about your superior? You see, I represent a consortium of physicians who are looking for a suitable investment property. Your consortium might be interested in buying our clinic? Well, if we can establish why the owner is willing to sell. The clinic is not unsound in any way. He was just into some kind of mogul trip. You know, buy, sell, move on. We were the capricious billionaire's latest hobby. Well, if I could speak to him, I might be able to help salvage your operation. Oh. Well, since you're really interested in buying, the present owner is Adam Chandler. Of course. I looked goofy? Mm-hmm. It's a look I've never seen on your face before. What gives? Happiness, contentment, well-being. Well, they happen so rarely, when they do, they should be savored. Anything special prompt this greeting card moment? I was thinking about the future. The distant future. But in the meantime, in the here and now, I'm famished. Could I take you to lunch? What if I'm not famished? Well, then, could I take young Colby to lunch? He must be hungry. Very savvy. Because young Colby wants chocolate pudding. <laughs> so I will let you take me to lunch. I may be a goal-oriented, money-loving, ambition machine, but I'm nobody's jailer. Well, thank you. I'm also no fool. I will not call Tad for you. Well, you don't have to. No, don't. Don't. Don't be crazy. It's so overheated in here, you might faint. In fact, I'm feeling a bit hot myself. I gotta take off my jacket. You don't mind, do you? I'll just drape it over here. Carefully. So that the cell phone doesn't drop out. Oh. Yes, that's a very bad thing, being overheated. You could catch a cold. Yeah. My throat's feeling a bit scratchy. I'm gonna go grab a soda. It's a good idea. You'll watch my jacket. I'll take real good care of it. Good. Thank you.
You got me. Hello? Dad, it's me. It's Dixie. Bye. It's been nice getting to know you.